Coming up next on the Retirement Halftime Show, finding the right financial advisor for your stage in life, the reasons why some advisors might not be the right fit for you. And being proactive usually saves you money. Why one of your first calls after a big life change should be your tax advisor. Plus, digging deeper into who needs to spend time creating an estate plan. And when to trust your gut or follow the data. Butler's basketball coach, Thad Mana, shares his system that could impact your financial planning. Now, on the Retirement Halftime Show. You wouldn't play a game the second half the same way you would the first, especially if you have the lead. This is the Retirement Halftime Show, helping you maintain your lead in retirement. Welcome to the Retirement Halftime Show. We begin today with an update on the developing story of the banking industry meltdown. For Joyce Financial Investment Advisor, Mike Markiewicz says right now, fear is driving decision making. These adjustments, these corrections, whatever you want to call them, there's always two parts to what can happen. One is the fundamentals, what is actually driving this up or down. And then you have the psychological impact, which sometimes can be more than the fundamental impact. The U.S. government already confirmed all funds deposited inside of the failed banks are available to be withdrawn, even if the deposits are more than the FDIC limit of $250,000. Unless you've got way more than $250,000 sitting in the bank, which it probably shouldn't be there anyway, um, I think you have very low uh, cause for concern. The problem started when Silicon Valley Bank didn't have enough cash to hand out when people asked for their money back. Since then, problems have been found at just a handful of other banks. We don't know how big this is going to get yet. In the short term, it doesn't seem like it's going to be spreading much more than what it already has. While the current story is drawing headlines, Mike says a bank failure isn't as uncommon as it sounds. You might be surprised to hear that since 2009, over 500 banks have closed their doors, right? You just didn't hear about it. Investors who have a diversified portfolio with a variety of assets may see a short-term hit to their portfolio as the stock market reacts to the headlines. But having a well-rounded portfolio is key. Equities are still good, okay? We still recommend we stay in the equity market. Anyone who wants to discuss their portfolio can call Rejoice Financial and schedule a review. The team is available to offer their knowledge and recommendations. Welcome to the Retirement Halftime Show. I'm Heather McWilliams and joining us is Alex Joyce with Rejoice Financial. Alex, I just read somewhere that only 29% of Americans have a financial advisor. Does that surprise you? It doesn't. Yeah. You know, it, it really doesn't. I've been at this a long time. I've been in finance a long time. Mm -hmm. I've owned this practice now going on 12 years. And But you're only like 22. So Thank how's you. that possible? Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> that means a lot. But, it, you know, when we speak to people, it is, and that's one of the big things we'll talk about in one of our other segments is one of some of the biggest misconceptions about when to retire. Yeah. Right. And I think there are huge misconceptions about hiring an advisor. Mm -hmm. And I also think that my industry doesn't make it very easy to hire an advisor because okay. our terms in this industry are used so loosely. Right. Financial advisor, financial planner, should I search for a certified financial planner? Yeah. Is it a is it a broker I need? And and a lot of times all of those people can be one person. Okay. Or none of the above. Okay. And so and then there's guys like me or other ind ind individuals in the industry that take their fiduciary responsibilities that they have very seriously mm -hmm. for their clients and they are very passionate about Right. That. And so I always say sometimes when hiring an advisor, we want to make sure that that advisor fits where you are in life. Okay. For instance, if you are hiring a retirement advisor, an advisor focused on making your portfolio more tax efficient, but you're only 25 years young, yeah. it really doesn't make sense. Right. Vice versa, where you are... Um, you are, you know, and you're getting ready to retire and take Social Security, saying 66, and you're looking for someone to advise you, and they're focused on buying and holding mutual funds for the next 30 years. Right. That doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. And so I think that um, understanding the priorities in what you're trying to accomplish right. and where you are in life, once you understand and you're truthful and you understand what you're trying to achieve, I think you should go out and then hire an advisor based on that need. Right. What I love about Rejoice Financial is you guys are holistic and you really do do it all. So if you need a CPA, if you need estate planning, I mean, you cover the gamut. It's a one-stop shop, which, you know, 
I would think people would prefer something like that. You know, my clients love it. Um, they, and for me, I love it. Yeah. And it was very difficult younger in my career, let's say going back a decade, mm -hmm. um, you know, when I was when I was looking at putting the pieces together. And of course, for me, looking back, um, it was nothing more than a value proposition. How is Rejoice different? What is our way? What is our belief? What is our mission? Uh, and when we pen the paper that and we look out and say, hey, if you walked into a Fidelity office and you were getting ready to retire or you have a, a, a journey ahead of you and you wanna know where you're taking income, what's more important, the taxation of that income or continuing to chase return by taking risk? Right. Well, there's a difference there. Most of the people that started coming in our office where we were, um, they didn't have even a will. Maybe they had seven figure savings, wow. but they didn't even have a will. Wow. Maybe they were married for the last 25 or 30 years and they didn't have a legal right to sign each other's name, which is just a basic power of attorney. Yeah, um, yeah. And they have real estate or they have businesses or they have, they have all these things that they developed in life, but no way to really protect it, secure it, and get to the next generation. Mm -hmm. And so when we found those errors, all we simply did is make decisions to clean it up. Easier said than done. Sure. Yeah, uh, which leads into our mission, right? Our mission, of course, as a planning firm is plan first, invest later. Okay. Without a plan, there simply is no investment. And so, of course, we do investments. Of course, we do planning, as you mentioned, Heather. Yeah. We do tax planning and tax filing. Uh, we, you know, group of attorneys. We do. We break down wills and we build trusts. And if there's words for it, we can create it. Mm -hmm. uh, very passionate about that. But I think that um, at the same time, I'm not. I'm very realistic in understanding. Listen, our processes that we built are not for everybody. Right. But for those that think that it does fit in their life, they should call us. Yeah, and they should do their homework too. Making sure people are credentialed and, and all that. They definitely should. I think that uh, understanding that um, in our legal structure, making sure that we are who we say we are. Yeah. Your advisor is who we say who he says he is. I think right. it's very, very, very important. Right. But I would rather definitely, um, especially establishing credibility and building those relationships. I think it's helpful just to go to one place. We love it. If people want to get in touch with you, make an appointment, what's the best way to do just that? Just pick up the phone and call. Take some time, take that leap of faith, and act today. Yeah, and don't be one of those 29% of the Americans that do not have yeah. a financial advisor. Do something about it. Great information, Alex. Make sure you stay tuned. We have a whole lot more coming up. Coming up next on the Retirement Halftime Show, the reasons why you should meet with a tax expert beyond just filing your taxes, how their guidance can save you big money. Plus, everyone who has people in their life that they love and want to take care of needs to have an estate plan, how much time it'll take to create one that lasts, and four ways to create better money habits to build confidence, security, and quality of life coming up. Schedule a no-cost, no-obligation visit today by calling 317-903-9157. The journey to retirement takes many twists and turns. Don't take that trip alone. Let the team at Rejoice Financial be your co-pilot. The expert team of financial planners can create a roadmap that gets you to your goals. They'll work with you to create a financial plan that gives you confidence and peace of mind. Start the process today. Call 317-903-9157 or text 707-REJOICE. Rejoice in your retirement. You're watching the Retirement Halftime Show, powered by Rejoice Financial. You're watching the Retirement Halftime Show. I'm your host, Alexander Joyce, and with me today is Marquita Berry. She's the director of our tax division. And today we're talking about, um, you know, taxes, not really in general, but I think that there is a, uh, a misunderstanding about why somebody needs us on the tax side of their life. And I think, you know, for some, it's like, well, well yeah, you know, I got a tax problem, mm -hmm. you know, or I didn't pay my taxes or I owe too much in taxes or am I underpaying in taxes? Those are normal reoccurring, I would mm -hmm. say, problems in the tax world. But I think that, um, you know, for normal people, you know, outside of April the 15th or whenever the deadline is to get your taxes in, mm -hmm. um, what are other reasons people should think about tax planning or tax filing? That's a great question, Alex, and I get that a lot from individuals. I, I need to ta file my taxes. What else do I need to do all year? And there are quite a few things that happen that should bring you to talk to your tax advisor. Um, thinking of 
you know, sending one of your children to school, life events, life yeah. changes. Yeah. You're going through your regular year, you're doing everything the same, and then you inherit some property that's worth millions of dollars. What do you do? Are you gonna file the same tax return? Of course not. You need to see a tax advisor to minimize that tax burden and understand what forms and documents you even need. Um, just like anything else, being proactive usually saves you a lot more money than being reactive. 100% agree. And I want to put clients in a proactive position yeah. on the category of tax planning. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, we talk about that, you know, when they choose us as their advisory firm or financial planning firm or wealth advisory firm. It's like, you know, when you're when you're climbing this journey, you have this journey in the first half of your life, the first half of your financial life. It's very, very passive, right? Yeah. Is you know, you throw some mutual funds together and don't don't look at it or buy some stocks and don't worry about it. Just like your 401k, keep contributing, comes out of your paycheck, employer matches mm -hmm. 20, 30 years later. Wow. Right. Look, yeah. look what, look what happened. Um, mm -hmm. That is a, um, you know, that is a systematic non-active approach, right? On, on, and finances and taxes, W2s, you, you know, you have an Intuit software, you, you, you use TurboTax and it's pretty mm -hmm. simple, right? But you know, when you, when you start and you mentioned this, as you start to, to become more mature in life, mm -hmm. Life events happen. People are coming in your life, right? Maybe mm -hmm. grandkids, perhaps kids. And then, you know, God forbid, someone's exiting your life as well. Mm -hmm. And what happens with that property and what happens with those assets, that is a change of life event. Most people do nothing. They take it upon themselves to do a little bit of research. Mm -hmm. uh, no offense. And then they just, they, they uh, out the door the tax uh, system goes. Or maybe that bill comes later in the mail or mm -hmm. that, uh, that audit. Yeah. comes later on a couple of years down the road and then it's uh, it's terrifying and so I think you're right taking a more proactive approach and meeting with you meeting with a member of our team talking to myself talking to someone here mm -hmm. um, it starts with a very simple you know what phone call or text message or I have a question right mm -hmm. and what's really cool about talking to you is is um, in myself it doesn't cost anything right exactly. I, I've seen you take a question with a client into an hour-long meeting Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, because mm -hmm. the, the truth is, sometimes that question, simple question, has more than one answer. Mm -hmm. And being um, patient, yeah. and being a good listener as you are, you can identify what's behind that question. And then there's layers and layers and layers of concern. Yes. And it takes an expert like you to identify what those needs are. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, you see it a lot, don't you? I see it a lot. One example that I'm thinking of is a client that says, I've always been a W-2 employee. We don't need to have this long conversation. I'm with a new job, but I just earn wages, W-2 employee. Well, now there's a new job and I take a look there, but understanding what you do, the retirement contributions, traditional versus Roth, just mm -hmm. getting into that conversation, the tax implications of having contributing to a traditional IRA, versus a Roth IRA. There are great tax implications. The client hadn't thought of that. Yeah. So it's just kind of giving them a chance to speak, but some of what you think you know, maybe set it aside or I'll sharpen it up. Yeah. But there's so much to every single piece of our life that can be affected by taxes. And I want to make sure it's the most positive effect and outcome for the client. 100%, I see it every day. There was a big question we had them last night. What happened today? You know, um, Can I still contribute to my Roth? And whether what they mean is, can they take one of the other traditional IRA and put it in their Roth? And that's a backdoor Roth or a Roth conversion. And we do those every day. Yes. Right? We're a big fan of those. And so that's part of the tax planning process. Mm -hmm. We're here to help. Um, take, uh, take, you know, give us a call. Go to our website, rejoicefinancial.com. Text us. Let's get that conversation started today. You're watching the Retirement Halftime Show, Marquita. Always a pleasure. Um, take that step in the right direction. Stay tuned, folks. There's more show to come. Still ahead, do you really need to create an estate plan? Why everyone at every age should have one. And advice from Butler's basketball coach about protecting yourself from someone trying to take advantage of you and your money. How the message he gives his players could help you too. You're watching the Retirement Halftime Show, powered by Rejoice Financial. You watch the Retirement Halftime Show. I'm your host, Alexander Joyce, and with me today is Alan Kowalski. He is our wealth strategist and also attorney. Uh, we are talking about estate planning, and I think it's really important, Alan, to really just kind of pinpoint uh, on this segment, you know, who needs an estate plan? You know, people that are young say, well, I don't need it yet. People right. that are middle-aged say, I don't need it yet. And then people that are more mature, right, they start to get into retirement, you know what they say? I don't need it yet. And so maybe um, give us an idea of when somebody should really start to plan and, and who needs one. 
Well, you know, I always think that's a funny question because it's like asking a dentist, when do you need to floss? Or a mechanic, when do you need to change the oil in your car? Right. Okay. They're going to say much more often than people actually do. Uh, but really, uh, estate, everyone needs an estate plan. Uh, you mentioned younger couples and younger couples that even if they're doing well and they still don't have that much wealth accumulated yet, they may have young children. And, uh, you know, you, you think about, you, you know, you care about what you do with your IRA. How much do you care about, God forbid, something happens to the parents who's going to take care of your children? Well, the only way to do that, for you to keep control of that decision, is, is by expressing that in a will, expressing a guardianship in a will. So, um, you know, that's, that's important planning for a young couple. Um, uh, lots of people might think that estate planning is only for the wealthy. You know, imagery we get from uh, Hollywood or movies, uh, you know, reading the Patriarch's Will. Um, but uh, really, everyone needs planning because when you remember uh, what planning is, it, it um, you know, it's not just tax planning, which uh, admittedly for many people, because of changes in the tax law, death transfer taxes are not an issue for many people uh, until you get to relatively high levels of wealth. But um, incapacity planning. Uh, you know, if people become incapacitated, um, carrying out and executing uh, powers of attorney for your finances and an Indiana um, advanced directive for your medical decisions, uh, should you be unable to make those decisions for yourself? I mean, they're, they're fairly straightforward documents. They're easy to execute and they're important decisions. If you don't make those decisions, someone else will make them for you. Generally, you have to get involved with the court. You're making things a little bit harder for your family. Um, so, you know, a big part, again, a uh, big purpose of estate planning at the 60,000 foot level is make things as easy as you can for your loved ones. Right. Yeah, and uh, the things I'm mentioning are really not tied necessarily to wealth. Right. Um, yeah, I think yeah. I think you're right. I think um, y you know, it's it's a it's, to me the takeaway would be now's the right time. Sure. You know, you know if you are it's like the, when you're deciding how much life insurance to get, and you're uh, you're in your working years, and perhaps you're the breadwinner, and you want to protect your spouse or your significant other. God forbid something were to happen to me prematurely. Yeah, you want to make sure they can sustain, maintain style of living, right? And so it's uh, it's taking uh, some time, and that's all it takes is a little bit of time um, with us. It takes about an hour, right? Forty five minutes an hour, so we can get a chance to understand more about what the family dynamic looks like, uh, where we can add value, and start the conversation of what we need to build. And what's really unique, uh, Alan, you being a part of the team, is that we built the stuff right here. You know, we're not, uh, you know, we, we build these processes and we build these, um, we, we recommend these services right here in our office. Right. You know, we do the same thing on the tax side. We do the same thing with our clients. We file their taxes. Uh, we do the same thing with our financial planning uh, systems and processes right here in our office. And so this isn't a conversation where we can just help you here on one thing. We're going to manage your money and then Joe Schmo down the road can do your taxes and then Joe Schmo down the road can build your estate plan and you're back here for your investment review. We want to make sure that we keep things tight. We want to make sure the process is clean and we want to make sure the communication is solid and so we can uh, to best service our clients. Um, any last words that you know our, our, our viewers should know on the topic of estate planning, Alan? On who, who needs it? Again, really, you know, uh, if you want to be conscientious and proactive, everyone needs it. Everyone you know, needs once it. Once you're an adult and you have, once you have people in your life that you care about and you love, yeah. and you, you want to take care of, um, and you want to make things easy for, sure, um, it's ready for, you're ready for planning. You're ready for planning. It may be straightforward, very straightforward planning, very or simple planning, <laughs> but it may not be. Yeah. yeah the complexity yeah. is not always tied to the dollar amount, and we can discuss that another time. Very, point. very true. You yeah. know, this is very basic because we're not talking about the distinct differences on this this segment, if you will, of what is a will, what is a trust, what is probate, what is that. We, we just want to help a family. Right. right. We want to right. start that planning system and that planning right. process. And we want you to come in. We want to, we want to get a chance to learn more about you. Exactly. Um, you can contact us, uh, QR code right down below. Um, call, call us, uh, schedule a visit. Doesn't cost a penny. And let's start that process today. Alan, I really appreciate your time. Oh, absolutely. It's always a pleasure. pleasure. Thank you, mm -hmm. sir. Um, don't turn to station, folks. You're watching the Retirement Halftime Show. We'll be right back. Coming up next on the Retirement Halftime Show, following your gut or following the data. Both strategies have a time and a place. And four money habits to start today that will build confidence, security, and a better quality of life. Text Alexander today and schedule a visit to discuss your financial goals for tomorrow and beyond. Text 707-REJOICE.
Reduce your tax liability and keep more of your money for your priorities. Our $199 service includes tax analysis, preparation, and filing your state and federal taxes. It's your money. Spend it on your priorities. Call and schedule today. You're watching the Retirement Halftime Show, powered by Rejoice Financial. Planning to win. Coaching strategies for financial success. Here's Alexander Joyce and Butler University men's basketball head coach, Bad Mata. You're watching the Retirement Halftime Show. I'm your host, Alexander Joyce, and with me today is Thad Mata. We're here. You mentioned something um, really cool, really, um, it, you know, it, it's intriguing to me because I'm a data-driven guy. Mm -hmm. You said that, you know, the peak of somebody's performance is going to be age 28. And there's no secret to why you said that. It's got to be proof in the data. Mm -hmm. How do you make, do you, are you general, and I'll just ask, I mean, you know, are you generally making this, how, what percentage are you making based off of emotion versus facts and data? Uh, you know what, <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a great lead into what we, we were just talking about because yeah. I'm not a numbers guy. Okay, really? I'm a, I'm a trust my gut, right? trust my heart, but I got guys around me that are numbers guys. Got it. And when I say, hey, this is what we're going to do, because I feel it, they can stand me up and say, no, 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 percentage says that's not a good idea, which is hiring my weaknesses. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm, I'm not, uh, I've, I've never been that way. And I think you know, some of the best assistants I have, have had were, were those types of guys where we, we, were, we were different, where I'm, I'm trusting you know, my, my instincts. And um, now I, I say, I'm probably more of a numbers guy than I'm leading on to. Sure. Um, but by the same token, um, I'm, I'm going with my gut uh, come game time. Uh, yeah. It just, I've, I've always been that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Same way. I mean, the same with recruiting. I mm -hmm. mean, you, you know, you, you go out, and of course, that's a part of your job is you're looking for people to, to bring into the process that right. you think are good fits for the process. Right. And I'm sure probably the same goes there and you take that data back or you take that person back and you, you talk to them, take the conversation back to your team. Right. Right. And then they, they do the analytics on it and say, why is it a pro? Why is it a con? You kind of T sheet it. No question. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm acting like I can do this stuff. I can't. Right? Yeah. I mean, no, no, it's, you know, I, I recruited <laughs> a kid. He, he came, went on to become national player, Evan Turner. And, when we, when we took Evan, everybody was kind of like, yeah, I don't think he's that good. And I'm like, you know what? I like him. He, he, he doesn't do anything great, but he does a lot of things good. Sure. And we can mold that. And, uh, you know, comes to us three years later, he's national player of the year, number two pick in the draft. Wow. And, and um, so I think sometimes that, that uh, sometimes it's not as sexy as, as it appears. But, sure. But you know, as the leader, you know... Uh, what and, and I think this knowing who you can coach, the type of kid you can coach. I, I struggle coaching bad kids. Um, That's true. I, I really, really do. That's true. In my in my business and you know from my experience with other advisors, um, sometimes they say that uh, the um, the good ones are always high maintenance. <laughs> you believe that? <laughs> I, I, I don't. You know, it, it's funny because uh, uh, I've I've kind of found it the other way. Is that right? Um, the good ones know why they're good. It's true. And and they it's, it's the ones that, that are living the, the false life of like, hey, I'm better than I actually mm -hmm, am. Mm -hmm. Those guys always seem to be hard to deal with. Yeah, <laughs> so. I, I, I bet that's true. I bet that's true. How is this thing with um, players being, you know, uh, I, I don't know if they're called advisors or brokers or whatever that looks like, um, you know, getting, I, would, I don't know from your perspective, but I would say that, if I was in, if I was in those shoes, it'd be kind of like getting in the way, a, an added distraction with waving dollars and cents in front of a college kid's, you know, dream right. of making it. Now they can they can go out and try to get paid, if you right. will, as a player, you know. And I'm sure I'm sure social media feeds into that, mm -hmm. which sometimes probably is already a, a huge distraction, right? <laughs> right, because I mean, there's a window of opportunity there. There's got to be. I mean, what is it? Four years, right? Either we're going to do something with this, or we're not, and, you, and eventually we got to call it what it is. They're right. either going to go overseas, they're going to make it, or they, you know they they focus their academics and become a professional right. at whatever it is that uh, that they decide and choose to do. But you know, has that added a lot of? I mean, am I just just making a big deal out of it? Is it adding more distraction? Do you see it much? Is it you know, an I, issue? I haven't seen it as a, as a distraction uh, to this point. I, I really haven't. Um, um, 
you know, I, I think just you, you got to get these guys to understand there's there's a reason you're getting paid or there's a reason you're going to get paid. Right. And and what what I don't ever want is for that to change. You know, for the guys that I've had that have gone on, I don't get involved in their hiring an agent or anything like that. Um, but I'm always concerned about their financial decisions mm -hmm. just just in terms of, of hey you you've earned that money mm -hmm. uh, I don't want people taking advantage of you because you see it uh, you know it's it's staggering how many professional athletes are broke now I know and um, and, and I think just from the standpoint you said 20 only 27 percent of retired people have talked to a financial planner like I know this no college athletes talk to one I know. <laughs> and um, yeah, isn't that crazy? It, yeah. it, it, a lot of times it happens overnight. Yeah. I mean, you go from nothing to being sure. a millionaire. And, true, true. and uh, at, at that point, having good people around you is very, very important. And that's kind of where I, I attempt to step in. Yeah, that's so, so amazing to me because I understand it from a certain level where, you know, you're young, you think you live forever, and there's always tomorrow. And I see it from their side of somebody being 68 or 70 years old or 65 or 50 years old is they, t they take it a lot more serious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Money, that is. Yeah, no question. Right? And, and, I, I, and I, have, I have had just so much, um, I'm very passionate about what I do. And I'm very passionate about helping younger people, mm -hmm. right? As well as I helping, you know, more mature people, right? Right. I mean, there's different stages though. There's the builder stage, right? There's the advanced saver. There's the, the, uh, the person that's looking for more efficiencies. And then there's, well, here's my, my desire, right? Here's what I want my money and stuff to do for me without my physical existence. Right. right. So there's different time frames, but the financial literacy part, I think is where there is a huge disconnect. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're a part of these people's lives. I mean, you're a part of these players' lives, a, a huge part. Um, and so it must, it has to come up, you're right? It, it, it does. Um, but <clears throat> what you find a lot of times now is, is there's, there's so many people, and we always talk about keeping your circle small. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, the family and, and sure. just be really, really careful who you let in your circle. It's true. Because those people... They weren't the ones in the gym uh, late at night. Understand. They weren't the ones in the weight room early in the morning. Right. Uh, you know, now everybody wants a piece of, of you, and, and you're the one that did all the work. Yeah. And, uh, and so I think true. that's something that uh, I, I try to coach our guys as much as I can to, to hey, this is, this is you and your families. Be real selective of, of who else gets to come in on this. That is, that is yeah, uh, w w very wise words. You're watching the Retirement Halftime Show, powered by Rejoice Financial. Today's tip of the week for stronger financial health. Improving how you manage your money takes time and dedication, but it's worth it. Here are four ways to create better money habits to build confidence, security, and quality of life. Set up an annual reminder to check your credit reports. You're entitled to a free credit report every 12 months. Check it for any errors that may be impacting your credit score. Set up alerts to stay on top of balances. Most banks and credit unions will send you a text or email if your balance gets too low. Sign up for the service to monitor your account and prevent any overdraft fees. Act fast and call your creditors if you can't pay a bill. Missing a payment will have a negative impact on your credit report. If you're having a financial emergency, contact your lender to see what options may be available for you. And always shop around when you're taking out a loan. Get estimates from several lenders to compare terms and fees. It's your job to protect your financial well-being. No one else will do it for you. Today's tip of the week for stronger financial health. Thank you for watching the Retirement Halftime Show. If you have questions about today's show, give us a call, send us a text, or go to our website. Most importantly, maintain your lead in retirement. I'm Alexander Joyce, and I'll see you next time.